Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontrar la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello fellow travelers and welcome to this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show I'm your host, Barry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination, Hey, maybe it's even yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. The music you're listening to is performed by Alberto Perez. Now, Alberto is the owner of the Lapa Lapa Group of Restaurants. Those are the Lapa Lapa, Puerto Vallarta's oldest restaurant on the famous Los Muertos Beach, and the El Dorado Restaurant and Beach Club right next door. So... You can enjoy that fantastic view of the Los Muertos Pier, all lit up at night in beautiful colors, or during the day in its grand splendor, for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, seated with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It's so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. This week, we are going to meet a Canadian. His name is Stéphane Renault. And he is from Montreal. He opened up a food stand on Basilio Badillo, where his specialty is smoked meats. And then I'm going to introduce you to Tony Zarate. And Tony is a longtime Puerto Vallarta restaurateur. He runs a place called Tony's Please. Uh, but before we get to those fine people, let's see what's happening this week in Puerto Vallarta, the 31st of March, 2019. Coming up on April the 7th, uh, just a reminder to everybody that it's going to change from standard to daylight savings time in Puerto Vallarta. And so, uh, finally, <laughs> the time change has made it to paradise. It's actually happening in most of Mexico. And if you're in town, make sure that you spring forward an hour on the 7th of April. Now, when you walk alongside the Malacan uh, in Puerto Vallarta, and the Malacan, if you don't know what that is, is a, it's kind of like a boardwalk, uh, but it's not. It's a big, wide walkway. And uh, when you are there, you might see some guys dressed up in some native Indian costumes, and they perform a ritual suspended by ropes, uh, hanging upside down. It looks like they're, they're hanging by a leg, right? And they swing around uh, this tall pole, and they spin around, and they drop down, being lowered uh, by this rope all the way down to the ground, as I said. And uh, someone is playing a flute and a little drum, and the question really is, who are these people, and what is this ritual all about? Well, it's known as the Ritual of the Voladores, and uh, let me read from this trip-savvy Mexico guide. The ceremony of the Voladores de Papantla is a cultural tradition of the Totonac people of the state of Veracruz. The tradition dates back to ancient times and has been passed down through the generations. The Voladores, or flyers, sometimes called hombres pajaro, or birdmen, launch themselves from the top of a pole of up to 150 feet in height, and they slowly descend, circling the pole. It's a breathtaking spectacle performed at a great height. The ritual begins with five men circling a tall pole. One of the men plays music with a flute and a small drum. Then they climb the pole and position themselves on a small wooden rotating platform at the top. The man playing the music is called the caparol. Uh, he stands in the center playing his flute and drum, and he does a dance facing each of the four cardinal directions in turn. This is one of the tensest moments for the audience as he performs this dance standing at the top of the pole without a harness or any protection. I don't know if they do that in Puerto Vallarta. I've never seen the guy standing up, okay? I've always seen him sitting down. But anyway... The platform then begins to spin, 
and then the four voladores launch themselves off and begin rotating the pole upside down. Uh, they're attached by a rope around their waist, but they twist a leg in the rope to maintain an upside down position. Uh, the caporal remains at the top of the pole as the others descend. In their descent, each volador circles the pole 13 times. 13 times for each of the four voladores for a total of 52 rotations, representing the number of years in the Mesoamerica calendar cycle. According to tradition, there was a severe drought in the Pitonacpan area of Veracruz, and food and water became scarce, so a group of elders met to find a solution. They decided that a ceremony should be performed to ask the gods to return the rain and fertility to the soil. They instructed some young men of the community to locate the tallest and straightest tree in the forest and bring it back to the village. So the young men set out to find the tallest tree. When they found it, they prayed and performed a ritual to the tree, and then they cut it down and brought it back to the village. They stripped the tree of its leaves and branches, dug a hole, stand it upright, and blessed the site with ritual offerings. Then they performed a ritual to the god Tipetotec, god of agriculture and springtime, uh, so that rains would return and nurture the soil and their crops would flourish. Uh, the men adorned their bodies with feathers so that they would appear like birds, thereby attracting the gods' attention to their request. They climbed the top of the trunk and with vines wrapped around their waists, they secured themselves to the trunk and launched themselves off of it, spinning in circles around the trunk. The symbolism of the Voladores, the four Voladores who descend to the ground, represent the cardinal directions, and the caporal at the top of the pole represents the fifth direction, vertical, the center of the universe. The Voladores perform in honor of the elements, the sun, wind, earth, and water, thus honoring the earth, the passage of time, and their place in the universe. The original performers of the Volador ceremony would have worn uh, costumes made of real feathers, representing eagles, owls, crows, parrots, and quetzal birds. But nowadays, the Voladors wear bright colored costumes that recall the brightly colored birds and the rays of the sun. The costume of the Voladors consists of a white shirt, red pants trimmed in bright colors with a yellow fringe. On their heads, the Voladors wear a handkerchief over which they place a round hat with a multicolored tuft representing the head of a bird. Uh, they wear a colorful sash shaped as two semicircles over the right shoulder, over the chest, and the back which represents the wings of the birds. The Voladors wear black leather boots with a heel. So, there you have it. The next time you see these Voladors, you are going to know the entire scoop. You're going to know the whole story. <laughs> and you can kind of pay attention to what they're wearing. That would be kind of interesting, too. I have a link to the article, of course, in the show notes. Now, I get really excited uh, when I get email from listeners, and I got a, an email from listener Cheryl. You know, I just love Cheryl. She's always sending me great ideas. You know, hint, hint to all of you others. Send me some ideas. Ask me some questions, right? She's the one that interest, uh, introduced me to, uh, to Jose, the, the most honest bandito on the beach, if you remember that. Uh, and Cheryl writes, still loving your podcast. So fun and informative. A couple of things. I'd like to know about the proliferation of pharmacies in Puerto Vallarta. So many on each block. Are they government-owned or privately owned? Why do you have to have a prescription at Pharmacia Guadalajara and Benavides and not some of the others? Do the doctors condone buying at pharmacies other than Guadalajara or Benavides, and why? And then also... Uh, how do you call 911 from a U.S. or Canadian cell phone? Do the operators speak English? What else do we need to know when we're calling them for an emergency? Uh, do they use GPS to locate people? Or if we have an insurance plan that covers ambulance service, should they be contacted first? Thanks very much. 
Keep up the good and valuable work. Cheryl. Okay, Cheryl. Well, both of these questions, these are great questions. And that 911 question, I can't believe it. I can't believe we haven't talked about that. So uh, let's let's get into that right now. First, let's talk about the, the pharmacies, okay? Uh, I reached out to one of my trusted pharmacists in Puerto Vallarta, and here's what he had to say about your question. He says, hola, Barry. Good to hear from you. You bring a couple of interesting questions. The long answer would include the history of Mexico. So I'll try for the short answer, all right? Traditionally, pharmacies in Mexico have been on the first line of health care. Doctors and clinics and hospitals have often had limited ability. The Mexican pharmaceutical industry flourished due to these and other circumstances throughout the country and provided economical medications. Then, the pharmaceutical companies, early on, developed efficient wholesaling to private pharmacias. Other key factors enabling the establishment of pharmacias is the fact that most are dispatching pharmacias, and they don't require compounding chemists, hence the proliferation of pharmacias. Tourist areas like Puerto Vallarta have even greater numbers of pharmacias due to the prices generally being so much less than in first world countries. Uh, Pharmacia Guadalajara and other large chain stores operate under the same licenses as all pharmacias. Some pharmacias opt out of some licenses dealing with the more restricted substances. Many more medications are over-the-counter in Mexico than in other countries and don't require a prescription. Uh, Psychotropics and antibiotics are among those which legally require a prescription. If you find a pharmacia that sells you medication without a prescription while another pharmacia requires a script for the same medicine then you can be pretty sure that the one requiring the script doesn't want to take any risks. Government pharmacies can be found in some government clinics and in hospitals, but the rest of them are private businesses. Uh, Doctors who prefer one pharmacia over another might have a financial arrangement with that pharmacia. So, Barry, I think these address most of your listeners' concerns And I hope it'll be useful to you. I hope to see you in your next visit, your friendly Vallarta pharmacist. Okay. Well, that is the long and short of the question, isn't it? (laughs) All right. Very, very interesting. Um, Interesting to know that um, if maybe you're looking um, to get something that you normally wouldn't be able to get in the big pharmacy, check the little ones. Maybe they're more likely to um, to take that risk, right? Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the 911 system. Yes, in, in fact, Puerto Vallarta in 2017 had put in uh, the, the first, their first 911 system. And every year it, it gets better, thank goodness. Now, let's go over the questions that uh, Cheryl had one at a time. How do you call 911 from a U.S. or Canadian cell phone? So I contacted Pamela Thompson. I have never sat there and dialed 911. I didn't really want to try myself. I contacted Pamela, and she said that though no one wants to think that they are going to have an emergency here, it happens, and it happens often. So uh, it makes everything much easier for you and your family and friends if information is in place ahead of time. First, she confirmed that, yes, you can dial 911, from your U.S. or Canadian cell phone while you are in Puerto Vallarta or in Nuevo, and you will actually be connected to the local 911 dispatch for either Jalisco or Nayarit. Uh, The next question, do operators speak English? As far as the operators in Puerto Vallarta, no. They usually do not. Most of them do not. Uh, Let's see, what else do we need to know when calling them for emergency? The word in Spanish for ambulance is ambulancia, ambulancia. So 
if you say ambulance, the operator will probably understand it, especially if they're a 911 dispatcher. Uh, now, because most of them don't speak English, you need to at least be able to tell them where you are in Spanish or at the very least know where you are in English, right? I mean, that means that you know you have to have a plan for when something goes wrong, when you have some sort of emergency, right? You should know where you are. Take a look around. You should know how to say where you are in Spanish, along with a cross street and a landmark. Now, Pam says, don't say something like, by the OXO or by the Palapa, <laughs> right? Because there's a lot of all that stuff going on in Puerto Vallarta. And, and by the way, don't say by the Pharmacia either, right, Cheryl? <laughs> so be precise, right? Uh, now, do they have GPS to locate people? Yes, the private ambulance companies use GPS, but the public 911 system, uh, those paramedics do not, okay? Uh, so what other, what other questions? If we have an insurance plan that covers ambulance services, should they be contacted first? The answer is no. Don't try to contact the insurance carrier first. Have a plan. Now, you should have a couple of private ambulance company numbers handy on your cell phone just in case of emergencies. Now, you people that are spending months at a time there, you need to have this plan, right? Okay. Uh, Pam gave me two private ambulance company phone numbers. Uh, put them in your phone. I have them in the show notes. I'm not going to tell them over the, phone, oh, over the, the air right now, but one of them is called Ara Ambulancias. And the other is IMR Ambulancias. Both have trained EMTs. And the numbers, like I say, are in the show notes. So check them out and put them in your phone. Put them in your phone before you leave to go to Puerto Vallarta. Make sure, of course, that you get yourself some traveler's insurance too. We talked about that as well. Now, many of you are full-time residents, like I said, or you know, here for many months at a time. And... Um, so on top of that, I want to talk to you a little bit more about some in important tips that uh, Pam has for you, especially if you're spending a lot of time here. We spoke about this with her in a previous episode. So if you haven't heard that show, just type in Healthcare Services PV in the search bar um, on my website, and you will. You'll find it there at www.portofartertravelshow.com. Or I have a link to the episode in the show notes. So listen, if you haven't already yet. It was a good interview. Uh, and here is her sage advice. Now, this is for, for you long timers, okay? No matter what your age, your health issues, your financial condition, your marital status, or your country of origin, there are a number of things that you simply should not put off doing. Compile a comprehensive list of emergency contacts, both local and international names, emails, phone numbers, relationships to you. Keep this list updated and give a copy to a trusted friend or neighbor. Compile a list of your meds by name and dosage and contact information for all of your doctors, uh, both local and international. List your blood type, any allergies, and include a copy of your insurance information. Keep the list updated and give a copy to a trusted friend or neighbor. If you have pets, designate a trusted friend to care for them if you're unable to do so and let that friend know that they are your designated caregiver. Uh, compile a list of these caregivers, their contact info, your vet's name and contact info, all meds your pets are taking, any other necess necessary things that you need to know about your little babies. Uh, make sure that a trusted friend has access to your home. Some condos ask that owners provide door keys if you're incapacitated. It's important that someone can enter and assist you. The police are not allowed to do so until a court order has been issued. Uh, do you really want to wait that long? If you live alone, make a pact with a friend to check on regularly, okay? If you are a homeowner, make a copy of the first few pages of your escritura and add this to your emergency file. Designate a place in your home to keep all these lists, a drawer, a file cabinet, a closet shelf, 
and tell someone where that place is. But don't just put these documents on a shelf and forget about them. Update them regularly. Outdated information is as useless as no information at all. Register with your consulate. In an emergency, they will have your back. To register with the U.S. consulate, I have the email for that. I'm, I'm sorry, the website for that. And to register with the Canadian consulate, I have the, the email for that as well. I have that in the show notes, so check that out. Remember, you guys, do this. If you're living there full-time, if you're not doing this, you need to. Keep this information under a magnet on your refrigerator. Um, they speak English. This is These are for the ambulances. Am- Ambulanza Aurora. And then I've got the number there, 322-209-0622. Ask them to call Pam Thompson to advise where to transport you. She can also arrange for the physicians to be ready and waiting at the hospital. Keep Pam Thompson's number. I have it in the show notes. Uh, Make sure you have it on your speed dial. And her email as well, Pamela at healthcareresourcespv.com. Again, they're in the show notes. Put that in your contacts, and Pam should be your first call in an emergency. And you can also contact her now and ask her about the PLUS plan. A lot of good discounts on medical procedures, and they keep a comprehensive medical record on you, which is invaluable in an emergency. So the bottom line, folks, get all your information together, keep it updated, and for goodness sake, tell someone where it is. Uh, So... There you have it, folks. You got the pharmacies, uh, you got the emergencies, the 911 system. Great question, Cheryl. And I'm looking forward to seeing you and your husband in May. So can't wait to get back to paradise. Thank you again for writing in. Okay, uh, let us now get to the interviews. Now, the last time I was in Puerto Vallarta, I, I did a double take as I walked up Basilio Badillo because they're amongst the uh, Mexican street vendors with their souvenir stands right along the uh, little uh, primary school area there. Uh, there's a Caucasian dude selling brisket sandwiches <laughs> out of a stand. It was kind of weird to see some non-Mexican at a food stand, but here he is uh, tucked in with all these other vendors, and uh, he's a busy guy. Uh, his name is Stefan Renault. And he's from uh, Montreal, Canada. And I got to tell you, his food is really, really good. So let's go right now to Basilio Badillo, uh, right alongside the the little schoolyard. And let's meet Stefan Renal, the brisket man of Basilio Badillo. All right, I'm with the brisket man. What's your name? My name is Stefan. Stefan Renault. Stefan, where are you from? I'm from Montreal. Okay, so uh, I'm walking down the street and I see a place that's selling. Well, tell us what you're selling. Uh, we sell Montreal smoked meat, uh, which is made here in house. Um, we also sell souvlaki and steak and cheese. But the house specialty is the smoked meat. Okay, so you do that in house, meaning that you're you got a smoker, you're you're doing this at home. That's correct. Yeah, it's the meat is cured for 12 days and then it's smoked for 15 hours. How long have you been here? I've been in Puerto Vallarta for just a few months, but I'm living in Mexico for uh, four, four years now. All right, so four years. So were you doing this before, before you came here? No, I was not. This is a, a new venture for me. All right, so when you came to Puerto Vallarta, you came with the thought that you're going to do this... Um, how did you find this stand in in the middle of um, all of these um, all of these other like uh, souvenir shops? Uh, it just was one of those one of those things. Timing. Uh, I was here seeing a prospect, and uh, the stand was for rent, and I decided to rent it. Simple as that. Um, is it reasonable? The rent? Yeah, it's reasonable. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Um, all right. So, tell us uh, your process. What do you What do you do? What's your What is your schedule like in the day? Obviously, you're you're busy uh, you're busy here at the stand, but you're also busy creating product. I imagine. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. There's uh, I'm smoking about seventy five kilos of uh, brisket a week, so it keeps me busy. Uh, <laughs> the 
Uh, there's a lot of process moving the meat from uh, different stages, from the curing stage to the smoking stage. And I've always got to be prepared two weeks in advance. How have you found uh, the product that you're, you, the, the meats in the area? Are they uh, decent for what you're doing? Uh, the meat where, where I buy, I buy from the, one of the best suppliers. Um, he's uh, not the cheapest, but he's the best. So you get what you pay for, and his, uh, his quality is always good. I buy from Colin, Carniceria Colin. He's an excellent butcher here in Puerto Vallarta. All right, so you're putting everything on rolls. Um, I heard you uh, talking to uh, this gentleman here about you have, a, you have rye bread rolls too, it looks like. So where are you getting, where are you getting your baked goods? I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, never mind, never mind. Just thought I would ask. All right, all right. But uh, obviously, you know, the sandwich, the, 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 the bread, you know, that roll is important in your product, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, the rye bread is a very important part of the smoked meat experience, especially for Montrealers. Uh, really? Okay. Yeah, I, heard, I heard you parley booing a little front, say, with the Montrealer over here. Okay, so... Uh, you make other stuff. You got some sides. Tell us a little bit about that. And you also, I heard you make your own mustard, huh? Yeah, we make everything. We make our own uh, Oktoberfest mustard. We make the sauerkraut, the pickles, uh, their uh, kosher uh, sour pickles, uh, coleslaw, and of course the smoked meat. All right, fantastic. Um, how has been the response? I, I, I saw you had a, a national sitting here. Uh, you get a lot of good responses from the Mexicans. Yes, everyone, it's been a hit. Everyone that's tried it has absolutely loved it. And we, d we do steak and cheese on a bun and with uh, grilled veg, and we also do a souvlaki on a pita. All right, well, you guys, you have it really under control here, it looks like. What are your hours, and tell us exactly where you're at. Uh, the hours at the moment are from noon until 1 a.m., and that's Monday, uh, that's Tuesday to Sunday. We're closed Mondays. Okay, fantastic. And you are, what's the address here? The address is um, Basilio Badillo, one block from the beach, with no number, right in front of Da Simone Restaurant. There you go. That's how you're going to find it. Uh, thank you so much for talking with me. I was intrigued when I saw your stand. And, you know, people come up here, they're also so surprised, and they all leave with big smiles. So uh, good luck at what you're doing, and I hope to see you next season. Thank you very much. Yes, you will. All right, Stefan. I uh, have got pictures of Stefan and his stand and his great sandwiches that he's making as well. And um, I have a map that'll show you where to find him the next time you're in town. Make sure you, you check out Stefan's sandwiches. They're pretty darn good. And what a surprise, man. Anyway, keep him in business. Let's see if we can keep that going. All right, my next interview, I'm going to take you to a restaurant called Tony's Please. I've been trying to get uh, Tony Zarate from Tony's Please on the show for quite some time now. And it's been really hard cornering him because he's a busy, busy guy. He, he's a hardworking man who uh, is running the family business with his brother Oscar. And they run a very welcoming, a very pretty um, restaurant, Mexican restaurant in the Emiliano Zapata neighborhood. Now, Tony didn't know that I was actually going to record him in English when I sat down. He really didn't want me to do the interview in English because, well, he was, you know, he was afraid it wasn't good enough, but he did really well. I reached out to my buddy, Gary Beck, who wrote the, uh, Puerto Vallarta restaurant guide, had him on the show. We talked about the guide, and I'm going to read from the guide right now the description of Tony's Please. Uh, Tony's Please, uh, Lazaro Cardenas, 440, near Jacarandas. They are open from 4 p.m. to 11, 4.30 to, yeah, 4.30 to 11 p.m. They are closed on Sundays. Tony's son, Antonio Zarate. Now, I don't want to get things confused. The Antonio Zarate is the one we're going to be talking to today, okay? So Tony is the dad. So Tony's son, Antonio Zarate, mom and brother, Oscar, serve an eclectic international menu, garlic, egg, or avocado soup, garlic or fried frog legs, tenderloin tips, 
shrimp or chicken crepes, chicken livers, uh, chili relleno, enchilada suizas, uh, ch chicken tetrazzini, filet mignon or pepper steak, Mexican plate fajitas, fish filet with cream shrimp sauce or veracruzana. Uh, the father owned the restaurant in 1960s to the 80s. The original was on Encino, uh, Calle Encino near the Rio Quale, which was a huge local favorite, complete with pool table, rowdy customers, and long lines. Many of the same offerings with some of the same cooks are available at the new location. There's air condition. No credit cards are accepted, so it's cash only. Uh, and by the way, I want to say to Gary, thanks for the info and his guide is a great item to add to your Puerto Vallarta essential reading list. It's only $6 US and you can email Gary for a copy. He accepts PayPal and you can get him at GaryBeck1 at yahoo.com uh, for today's copy of that guide. And so thank you, Gary, for that information and for filling me in on some of the history of Tony's Please. So let's go right now to Lazaro Cardenas 440 in the Emiliano Zapata neighborhood of Puerto Vallarta, and let's meet the man himself, Antonio Tony Zarate from Tony's Please. Tony, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you Hey, listen, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Are you from Puerto Vallarta? I'm from for Puerto Vallarta, yes. Uh -huh. I'm 51 years old. Okay. And uh, so tell us a little bit about how you got involved in cooking. How? And, yeah. Well. The, rest, the restaurant business. That's my father's business. Is it? My father and I, I'll learn with my father. Yeah. My okay. mom too. The family. The family business. When did you open up this place? The first, well, my father opened the, the first Tony's place and one block to the flea market. And that was? Uh, uh, then to the river, uh, to the Quale River. Yeah. Uh, 42 years ago. Wow. Okay, so it was, it was by the river. Uh-huh. 42 right. years ago. Okay. And, uh, and then that's where, did you start working for him when it was down by yes. the river? I'm, okay. I'm 11 years old when <laughs> I had my father. Is that right? Oh, wow. Okay, so when you're, are you a, are you a chef? Did, did did he put you in the kitchen? Did he just keep you out front? What's going on with that? No, I'm I'm chef. I'm, I know kitchen, but no, I like more the the service, the people, you know, my friends, my customers. Yeah, I have a very good chef. Okay, good, good. That's that's fantastic. Tell us a little bit about your menu. What your menu? My menu yeah. is international. Uh, seafood, uh, beef. Pastas, todo, livers. Do you have like a special dish, like a specialty of the house here? Well, yeah, there's a pepper steak. Yeah. The pepper steak is the most popular place here. Okay, very good. Everybody loves the pepper steak. Everybody you, is. You need to try my I'm going to give it a try. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I, you just say pepper steak once and you just, that's all you have to say. Uh, what about. Um, what about things like desserts and stuff? Do you make desserts here? or uh, Yes, but we have only flan for dessert. Okay, so my you're... Sister, my sister makes the flan. It's a homemade recipe. You're not yeah, just buying it off the, the street. Yeah, the family recipe, the best flan. Uh, fantastic. It's all like right. creme brulee. Yeah, all yeah, right. very good. Uh, I <laughs> love that. Right to. <laughs> I'm going to try it too. Are you kidding me? All right. Um, so, how many tables? Ten tables. Ten tables. And so I you... have room for 40 person. Yeah. And so in high season, it, yeah, I'm well, sure you get real busy here, don't you? Is, yeah, it's nice. Really busy. God, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you got a great, you know, you got a great location and you got a really pretty restaurant. Yeah. Um, I have friends for more than 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Customers for well, more than 20 years. What's with the, what's with the name? What's the, why is it Tony's Please? What Tony's, is Tony's Please? please? Yeah, yeah. It's a funny story, you know. <laughs> well. The original, this, the Tony's Place. But you know, in Vallarta, 40, 42 years ago, nobody speak English and nobody <laughs> write English, you know. And the man lose the paper, the, the Tony's place, and he remember like a place, place, and look in the dictionary. 
Falei isso, ok. Há 42 years ago, and later we the Stones place. It's still Tony's place. Uh -huh. Well, it's a good story. Um, it's a good, and that's a good reason. That's a good reason just to keep it that way. Otherwise, people would they'd go, what? What's Tony's <laughs> place? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. When you moved from the river up here, uh -huh. how long has that been? No, we moved it to the river. We moved to the highway to Mismaloya. Yeah. And 91, and 90. Uh -huh. And the war, the 91. The, but we have right here 21 years. 21 years in this place here. In this on place, Lazaro in Cardenas. Lazaro Cardenas, 440. Yeah, all right. Years. Tell us about your bar. You got a full service bar? Yes, full you? service. Okay. And very good price and... Very good bar. <laughs> yeah. So you got, you got, the, got the beer and you've got beer, everything. Beer, rum, vodka, tequila, whiskey, margaritas, right. the flavors, mango, strawberry. Okay. Todo. All right. So you do them blended or whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Of course. Right on. Yeah, of course, whatever they want. <laughs> Just whatever the customer wants around here, always. What are your uh, biggest challenges running a restaurant? The competition, maybe. Yeah. So, uh, so many restaurants in Puerto Vallarta, but I love my war, you know. My customers is like my family. So it's, it's very easy for me. Yeah, wow. Well, well maybe the choppings, the choppings in the morning are <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> Gotta get <laughs> up early. <laughs> Gotta get up early and make sure that oh, you, uh, yeah. you get the good stuff before yeah, everybody else gets it. Vegetables and I look everything. You yeah. Know? yeah, you guys do salads and stuff? Or? Yeah, the plate, we have a small salad for before the plates. Uh huh, okay. And chips, fresh, salsa. Wonderful. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Tell us. Let's leave. Let's leave Tony's place just for a little bit. Let's go outside. Let's go out to Puerto Vallarta and the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. If you were going to go away for a day, but come back the same day, where would you go? On my day off. Or? Yeah, on your day oh, off. If you were going to leave town for a day. I have a child. A day. I have a son that's seven years old. You know. And the pools and the beach and the staff play soccer, basketball. Yeah, I see he's the karate kid over there, too. He's got some karate thing going on, too, right? Yeah? Uh -huh. Yeah? All yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <good. The> karate. <laughs> so I, I know, so I, 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 can, I understand because, you know, I, I've had little kids before, too. You too? Oh, yeah. So no they're, they're, it's a lot of work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm guessing maybe that three day, or if you got a weekend off, you're probably doing the same thing. You're you're hanging with the kids. Yes, good for you. What a good you won, eh? What a good <laughs> dad you are. Well, yeah. All I right, you hear that? You're number one, kid. Just keep that in mind. It's twenty three. Right. Is that right? Twenty two. Oh, he's twenty the third. I all uh, right. Uh, twenty one is my father. Yeah. Uh, I'm twenty two, and he's twenty three. Yeah. Maybe. Tony's and place for more time. I was gonna say maybe he'll be he'll be running the place too one day. Uh huh. Yeah. Is that what you hope? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. He's uh, he'll be listening to this later on, and we'll see. Um, if uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, food. I know that you're a, a dinner place. So we're not going to talk about dinner. Yeah, let's talk about like breakfasts and maybe lunch time. Uh, do you have like a kind of a favorite little fonda, a little hidden fonda that people maybe would yes, never I think like, about? I like the traditional. The Mexican. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The name is Lorena. The one for breakfast, Lorena, yeah. and Mi Pueblito. That's a very good place for for breakfast. Okay, so what what do they serve? Is it like a Fonda style? They just you sit down and they say, we're serving this today, and then they just yes, bring it to you? Beautiful uh, fried beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got they got the best. Yeah, Mexican, huh? yeah. yeah. The, you know, for, for Mexican, not for American. Right, no, I get it. I get it, Real. totally. Wex, machaca, yeah. Where's that? The me, the restaurants. Yeah. Well, one is uh, from Las Glorias. It's mi pueblito from Las Glorias, and the other, I don't know you. It's. Uh, uh, I don't remember. The, I know. I know you. The name they call it. I know. You know. Here's the. Here's the thing. You know. We it's are. Not for tourists. That's for. No. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. You know. No, the tourists. No. No. The Mexican. Yeah. The Mexican people know. Well. Sorry, yeah. that's for the libramiento, but you know, mm -hmm. it's, okay, it's don't hard. Worry. We can, we'll find, you know what, we're going to find those places, and I'll find them on the map, and I'll make sure that my it's listeners right. know where those are, definitely. 
Uh, it, but remember, it's for the Mexican experience, you guys. Uh -huh. It's not going to be, you're not going to find anything American like there, okay? Tortillas, handmade. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the way to go. Really? If you had a word of advice for a first time visitor to Puerto Vallarta, what would you tell them? Well, well for the Malcon and no, the very good restaurant. We have a very good restaurant in Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. The food is excellent and the people is well, amazing. They're the nicest Friendship. people you'll f you'll find. It's, it is amazing, you know? See, Always yeah, a really. smile. And if it's not a smile, well, maybe there's a reason uh -huh. for that, you know? So that's okay, too. Yeah, yeah, all the people. Friendship is very nice. Yeah. I would think that that probably is a big, is a big reason why... It sounds to me mm -hmm. that's a big reason why you like your job, because you like yeah. the, uh, the relationship that you have the with right. your, with your uh, mm -hmm. clients. I can see that. And, uh, you know, yeah. they love you, that's too. That's what I like. My, I love my work. You know, they come walking in here and they hug him and they say, Tony, and uh -huh, he hugs him back. And, you know, he's always got a cold and he's always sick because these people are bringing him diseases and they're sneezing all over him. I'm kidding. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but they love him. They love him. So, yeah. um, Is there anything else? Have I forgotten anything that you might want to add? When you come to Puerto Vallarta, come to Tony's place. Yeah, thank absolutely. you for coming. That's right. And you like it. You love it. You will love it, and you'll <laughs> love Tony. Tony is this, yeah. he has got this huge smile. He's the nicest guy, and uh. he's got great food. All right, Tony. Oh, tell us a little bit about uh, where do we find you? Are you uh, are you anything like uh, TripAdvisor or and TripAdvisor? You, and you guys, Facebook too. You got, you got a Facebook page? Uh huh. Okay, very good. All right. Well, I'll make sure that we have links to all those things in the show notes for this episode, and I'll have a little map. It'll take you right to the front door of Tony's Please. Please, come to Tony's Please. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. That's it. All right. <laughs> well, Tony is a shy and soft-spoken man, but he really loves his clients. And he and his brother Oscar and the whole family love their clients. They love to cook good food. And if you need some love, you need some real good Mexican food... <laughs> Next time you come to Puerto Vallarta, you got to go to Tony's, please. And I have some pictures of the place. I have a map that'll take you right to the front door. And I have links to everything in the show notes, of course. So go check it out and go tell Tony that you heard him on the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. Tell him he sounded great, okay? He'll get a kick out of that for sure. All right. Okay, well, that should do it for this week. Next week, stay tuned for more on the ground reports from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, with travel tips, great restaurant excursion ideas, and more. But until then, just remember this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and your suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and send us your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to ViartaInfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour through him right from his website. Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition, my friends. JR's experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you would do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide. It, it costs no more than if you were going to use someone else. So do it, really. And when you do take one of those tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and send off a message. And don't forget, JR's got his maps, his DIY tours, his Vitalized happy hour board and more and i have links to all of those in the show notes and once again if you like this podcast please take the time and subscribe and give me a good review if you would that way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place where it's by our to mexico and remember i made it easy for you to do just that with each episode i create but if you haven't been to my website hey you really need to go have a look there Really, I have links to the places that we talk about, interesting pictures, and more right there in the show notes and in the blog links for each episode of the show that I create. So 
Check them out for sure if you haven't already. All right? All right. And thank you, Stefan Renault. Check out his smoked meats. I have some brisket. Have a brisket sandwich with your Puerto Vallarta. Really, forget the tacos. Get a sandwich. <laughs> Listen, you're going to agree that he has a great recipe, and it is the bomb. And hey, thank you, Tony Zarate. Check out the great food and the value and the service at Tony's Please. He's going to make you feel like you're part of the family, really. And hey, thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for all of you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Puerto Vallarta